Hi folks, thanks for joining me. Today, I wanted to make a quick video explaining how to use a liquid culture syringe to inoculate grain spawn for DIY mushroom cultivation. Liquid culture is pure living mushroom mycelium. It is the simplest, easiest, most reliable, most consistent, and most affordable way to get started growing your own mushrooms from scratch at home. <clears throat> it allows us to take advantage of advanced sterile culture techniques without having to have any special skills or equipment. Now, before we get all scientific, let's just start by taking a deep breath. Chances are, we just inhaled a couple dozen spores. On average, there are thousands of fungal spores in every cubic meter of air. Here we are, hurtling through the cold, lifeless vacuum of space. And yet, life pervades even the most desolate reaches of our entire planet, from extremophile bacteria lurking in seafloor volcanoes to that pet slime mold that I may or may not have forgotten in the back of my ex-girlfriend's refrigerator. Mushrooms thrive in the same environment as many other organisms like bacteria, yeast, and mold. So if we're not careful, we'll start out trying to grow one type of fungus and end up growing another. This is why we begin growing mushrooms in a completely sterile environment so that the mycelium can begin building some biomass before having to deal with any competition. Once we have our mature grain spawn, the mycelium can begin to fend for itself and we don't have to be quite so careful. Normally, this process would require us to use specialized techniques and expensive laboratory equipment like autoclaves and laminar flow hoods. The beauty of using a liquid culture syringe is that most of this hard work has already been done for us. When injected into a bag or a jar of sterilized hydrated grain, we can turn just a few drops of this liquid into many pounds of mycelium in just a matter of days. Because the syringe, the needle, and the jar all remain sterile throughout the process, there's very low risk of contamination and the cultivation process is off to a great start. All you really need to make this work is a liquid culture syringe, which should always come with a sterile needle, and a jar or bag of hydrated sterilized grain that includes an air filter and an injection site. You can make these yourself quite easily and I've got a great video showing how to make airport lids for jars specifically so make sure to check that out. You can find a selection of gourmet and medicinal mushroom cultures on my website at fungaya.life or for an even more exciting and extensive selection make sure to go visit our sponsors at truebluegenetics.org. They have the best library, the best prices, the best quality control in the industry, great customer service, and they even have a scholarship program for all you blessed strugglers out there. I stand behind this company 100% and I can't recommend them highly enough. So if you go, make sure to show us some love by using the coupon code FUNGAIA and get yourself 20% off at checkout. I wanna note here that I'm talking specifically about liquid culture, not spores. Liquid culture is grown from a single isolated tissue clone of an individual fungal organism, whereas spores are more like seeds. They're very useful for breeding purposes, but not so much for basic cultivation. They're inconsistent and they're far more likely to contaminate. That being said, the process that I'm about to show you will work exactly the same whether you're using a spore syringe or a liquid culture as I recommend. As for grain, I do offer pre-sterilized grain bags and all-in-one kits on my website. And I know there's plenty of other companies out there who are cranking this stuff out on the cheap. So it won't hurt my feelings if you go elsewhere, but please do me a favor and go organic if at all possible. There's a lot of toxic chemicals that are involved in growing specifically grains and not only are they detrimental to your fungus, they're gonna be detrimental to you. Better yet, you can just make grain jars yourself. It's simple, it's fun, it's way more rewarding, and it's a lot cheaper. So make sure to go check out my upcoming video on how to prepare your own grain spawn where I detail the entire process from start to finish. And while you're at it, you might as well also check out my video on how to make your own injection port lids. And you'll be self-sufficient in no time. There are a couple of other things that I find very helpful for this process, though none of them are necessary. First of all, your syringe should come with an alcohol swab, but you might as well just go ahead and invest in a spray bottle filled with 70% isopropyl alcohol and a roll of paper towels. It's also never gonna hurt 
to just put on some nitrile gloves. There's one other thing I recommend. I always really like to use an alcohol lamp when I do my inoculations. The rising heat of a working flame creates a local sterile environment. And it's not necessary, but it will increase your chances of success and it's especially important if you want to save part of the syringe for later if you're working with agar plates. And I'm going to go over this in a lot more detail in my upcoming video on sterile culture techniques. First, I'll show you how to do this with jars, and then I'll talk about bags. And then at the end, I'm going to offer you a couple of extra tips, so make sure to stick around. Before you begin, you'll want to create a clean workspace. It's best to do this in a still air environment if possible. Smaller rooms tend to be less drafty, like bedrooms or even closets. You can make the kitchen or the bathroom work, but they tend to harbor higher concentrations of mold. Now there's no need to go hosing down your walls or blasting your place with bleach or cleaners. In fact, this will do very little to increase the chances of success and it can be quite harmful to your health. However, it is a very good idea to turn off your central air system, turn off fans, heaters, air conditioners, air filters, close the doors, close the windows, and just allow the air in the room to settle for a few minutes before you begin. Start by wiping down the injection port, the syringe, and your fingertips using the 70% isopropyl alcohol. Peel open the needle first, then take off the cap from the syringe and screw the needle on. Slip the cover off, then gently insert the needle through the injection port, and squeeze the liquid culture into the grain. A single syringe can inoculate 5 to 10 whole pounds of grain. You may be tempted to stretch it, but the more you use, the faster and more effectively it will grow. In theory, a single drop of liquid culture would eventually grow to fill the entire jar, but it'll take forever and problems are far more likely to arise during that time. For best results, I recommend using about 3 milliliters of liquid culture per jar and a full 10cc syringe for a 3 to 4 pound bag of grain or an all-in-one bag. Check out my video, How to Make Liquid Culture the Easy Way, for a simple method to expand one liquid culture syringe into many, so that you don't have to worry about using too much. Shake each jar for a full minute or two to distribute the liquid culture as thoroughly as possible. I have a specific motion I like to use. I rock the jar side to side and twist a little each time. Taking some extra time for this now will cut your incubation time in half. Repeat this process for all your jars. Stay focused and work quickly to avoid unnecessary exposure time. When you're working with bags, the process is pretty much the same. Wipe the injection port with alcohol, peel open the needle, uncap the syringe and screw it on. This time, as you insert the needle, make sure you don't accidentally puncture the opposite side of the bag. For best results, inject the entire 10cc syringe into the bag all at once. Spray it across the surface to distribute it through the grain. I've played around with many different injection port bags, and I can tell you from my experiments that all of them are prone to leaking. Use the sticker that came with the bag or just a piece of clear plastic packaging tape to tape over the hole where you stuck the needle in. Make sure that the alcohol is completely evaporated first or the adhesive won't stick. Just like with jars, you want to mix the grain as thoroughly as possible right away. Shake it up, down, and all around, then bounce it on the counter a few times to settle it to the bottom. Always be sure to label your grain spawn with the species name and inoculation date. Then incubate it in a warm place away from direct sunlight and watch as a few tiny cells become a mighty fungus in just a matter of days. After a week or two of growth, you may notice large, untouched patches of grain. You can break up and mix the mycelium to speed up the process and get full, even growth. However, this is disturbing to the fungus, so it's best to avoid doing it more than once if you can. Break up the grain by knocking the jar against your palm or a stack of books, then mix it the same way I showed you before, twisting and rocking. After about three weeks, your grain will be fully enveloped in luxuriant white mycelium and is ready to use for the next step in the mushroom cultivation process. As you can see, this process is really quite quick and simple. Liquid culture syringes make it easy for you to get started in mushroom cultivation, allowing you to skip over the most delicate parts of the process so that you can focus on just growing the mushrooms. Then, as you develop your techniques and you gain experience and confidence, you can work your way backwards to more advanced techniques as you go along. Whenever I get a new mushroom culture, I always dribble a couple of drops onto a sterile petri dish. This helps me verify that the culture is clean and healthy, and if there is a problem, it allows me to see if the problem was with my process or if it was a problem with the syringe when it arrived. The petri dish also allows me to continue working with that culture in the lab. 
I'll tell you all about this in my upcoming video on sterile culture techniques. I also like to use a little bit of the syringe to start a new batch of liquid culture. I can turn one syringe into dozens more. I also go over this process in great detail in my video on how to make liquid culture the easy way. So to recap, whenever I get a new mushroom culture, I always start with some grain spawn so that I can grow it right away, start a little bit of liquid culture so that I can keep it going, streak a little onto an agar plate, and then I always try to save the last little bit, cap it tight, and store it in the refrigerator for later. When I'm doing this, I also take a little extra care to keep the cap sterile by placing it upside down near my alcohol flame and handling it with sanitized gloves. One of the many great advantages of liquid culture is that it's remarkably stable. When stored, sealed, and kept sterile in the refrigerator, it can remain viable for many years. This syringe then becomes my backup for my master culture. And anytime I want to get more of that particular mushroom strain growing again, all I have to do is pull it out of the fridge, drip a couple more drops onto a Petri dish, and I'm off to the races again. What this means is that with the right techniques, some practice, and a little bit of luck, you can turn one liquid culture syringe into a lifetime supply of mushrooms and build a respectable mushroom culture library for just a few bucks. Of course, this all involves a fair amount of delicate work. So if you prefer, you can always just skip the fuss and buy bulk liquid culture from us at fungaya.life or go and visit our sponsor, True Blue Genetics. Make sure to use that coupon code fungaya at checkout to let them know we sent you. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Make sure to subscribe because we got a lot of great free educational mushroom cultivation content in the works, including how to make your own grain spawn, how to make liquid culture, working with agar plates or petri dishes, how to build and maintain your own mushroom culture library. My name is Paul Lin, and this video is another step towards my life dream of starting a free school where we can share ideas about mushroom cultivation and other creative methods to deepen our connection with the natural world and help bring healing to our planet, to each other, and to ourselves. Much love. Catch you on the next one. <laughs>